Quite a long time ago, I made a video about air tool motors or vein air motors, air vein motors. Uh, but the camera that I was using was quite poor quality, so I've decided to remake the video. On the bench in front of me, I have a variety of air tools. Even though they serve a variety of purposes, they all have one thing in common, and that is the drive motor, or the air vein motor, in each of them. These two guns are known as impact guns, and both have a hammering mechanism in them. This is an air ratchet, and has a ratcheting mechanism. And this is a die grinder, and is the most simple of them all. I will go over a basic explanation of all of these tools and when I get to the large impact gun I will give a in-depth explanation of how the air motor works. I will start with the air die grinder which is the most basic of all of the tools. It's the most basic for a couple of reasons. One, it's non-directional meaning it only turns in one direction. So there's no mechanism on it to switch directions. You simply depress the lever and the motor turns in a clockwise direction. It's also very simple because the motor is connected directly to your tooling. There's no gear reduction, there's no other mechanism. It is just your motor shaft connected to your tool. Now I will remove the protective cap, spin off the retainer for the motor, and the motor will slide directly out of the body. We'll set that aside for a second while I show you inside the body of the tool. So this is a very simple setup. The air comes in through the inlet, passes through a valve, which is activated by this lever, and then the air flows out through some orifices or passages in the back side of the motor housing. If we hook this up, we can see this will just become basically like a large blowgun. When the air motor is inserted into the body, there is a key here that fits into a keyway in the motor that makes sure that it goes in place and stays in that place. This is important because the inlet for the motor is located at the bottom and the valve is located at the bottom. When you depress the valve, air comes out through the center hole in the body of the tool, enters in through the center hole in the back of the motor, as it passes through the motor, it passes by some veins which causes the motor to rotate. The air exits through these holes and passes out through the front of the tool. Taking a look at the retainer nut, we can see that the hole is a lot larger than the size of the shaft. This is so that the air exiting through the front of the motor can come out through the front of the tool. Not all tools are built exactly like this one, but this is basically how an air tool motor works. Now that I have the tool reassembled, I can show you the air coming out through the front of the gun. I'll hold up this rag and pull the trigger. It's very obvious there is air flowing out the front of the gun. Some higher end tools or some better quality tools will route the air through passages or through holes in the body of the gun and have them exit through the rear. So next up we will have a look at the Craftsman Air Ratchet. This is a quarter inch drive air ratchet and though this is quite similar to the die grinder we will see that there are a few differences. One difference is that we want the tool to turn a lot slower 
then we want a die grinder tool to turn. So there is a gear reduction system in this. The other difference is that this is a ratcheting mechanism and we want to be able to switch directions. So that is done externally on the head of the ratchet. And what I mean by that is the motor still only turns in one direction. This motor is non-directional. It turns clockwise all of the time and the direction of your tool is changed by switching the ratchet on the head. I've already loosened up this nut so we can spin the head off of this tool. I will start by showing you guys the similarities between this tool and the air die grinder and then I will get into explaining the gear reduction and the ratchet system. So let's take this apart. comes apart very easily, almost as easy as the die grinder. So we'll set that aside. So we'll pull the air motor out of the body. There is a small washer that goes on the front of the motor. If we look inside of the body of this, you will see it is very similar to the air die grinder. It has the same passage in the center, it has the same lever, and the bodies look almost identical. They look a lot alike because this part of the tool works essentially the same. We have the air coming in through the inlet, there is a single valve, that valve comes in through a center port or orifice, that orifice is in the back of the motor in the same location. The motor is indexed with the body that goes in on a pin. The air follows the same path, meaning the air travels in through the back of the motor or passage or port. It travels through the motor, moving some veins or blades and exits through the side of the motor. As I explained with the die grinder, some nicer tools, or some tools that are engineered in a slightly different way, have the air exit through the back of the tool. This usually makes the tool more user friendly because air blowing out through the back of the tool tends not to disturb your work. With the air die grinder, this being a very cheap one, air blowing out through the front of the tool, as we saw, blew that rag around, it would also blow chips around or dust or anything that you were working near. The air on the Craftsman motor exit in the same place as the die grinder motor, but then instead of traveling forward and out through the head of the tool, travel backwards through the ports on the sides of the body of the tool, and then exit through the back around the fitting. Now that we've seen the similarities in the motor and explained the difference of the air travel, I will set this aside and we will get into the gear reduction system. The motor of the tool on an air ratchet does not engage directly with your socket. There are a couple of reasons for this. One of those reasons is we need to reduce the speed at the same time increasing the torque and the other reason is we need to be able to reverse the direction of the tool. We need to be able to put bolts on and take them off. So this head of the tool does both of those things. We have the air motor, which we've already explained is very similar. And then we have a planetary gear reduction system. So the planetary gear reduction system takes care of lowering the speed of the input shaft on the head of the tool. Now we need to deal with being able to reverse the direction. So I will take the head of this apart a little bit and explain how it works.
Sitting on the table in front of me, we have a whole lot of small parts, which hopefully I can get back together. This is the shaft that connects to the planetary drive. So the motor turns this shaft. When the motor turns this shaft, we have this eccentric tip on it. The shaft goes into the end of this bearing piece, which is then inserted into this mechanism. When the motor rotates, it moves the head of the tool back and forth. When the tool is operating, we have the inner ratchet mechanism moving back and forth like this, just as you would move your ratchet back and forth. This is the device that controls the direction of rotation of the tool. We have a switch here and that switch controls this little dog that has teeth on the end of it. Those teeth engage with the moving part of the tool and allow it to rotate in one direction but not in the other. The device that controls the direction of the tool is exactly the same as it would be in any ratchet. So I will give a brief explanation of how that works. The switch on your ratchet controls this dog or paw which has teeth on the end of it. Those teeth engage with the inside of the body of the ratchet and allow the head to turn only in one direction. As you try to turn it the other direction, those teeth dig in and resist movement. When you switch the switch on your tool, it sets the other dog or paw to engage with the body of your ratchet and now your tool can move in the opposite direction. So that's basically what there is to the air ratchet. We will quickly put this back together and get on to explaining a butterfly gun. Now that I have the tool all back together and hooked up to an air supply, I'll show you guys the air does not come out of the front of the tool. But in this case it comes out around the back of the tool. The butterfly gun is similar in the way that it has an air vane motor. The ways that it is different it has an impact drive, so it is not coupled to your tool with a planetary drive, and it is not coupled to the tool directly. It goes through an impact system, which we will have a look at later when we look at the big impact gun. Other way that this is different is instead of reversing the tool by using a mechanical device after the motor, we reverse the motor itself. In this tool, we have a paddle on it, and there are two valves instead of one. We will take this apart now, and I will show you guys basically how the air motor works and how we control the direction of the tool using the air instead of a mechanical device. You will notice right away there's one difference. We're accessing this motor, or this tool, by taking the back cap off instead of the front off of the tool. So the main reason why this tool comes apart different is because the direction of the motor is controlled by the airflow which travels through the back housing. So we'll take it apart now and I'll show you guys basically how that works. When we pull this apart we have our butterfly which is the actual lever used to control 
the valves. We have the valves here and here. We'll set that aside now. And we'll have a look at the similarities between this tool and the other air tools. As we've seen with the other tools, they all require some sort of an indexing mechanism. This tool and many other air tools use a pin for indexing. So this pin travels through the body of the tool, goes into a hole in the back, goes into a hole in the front, and travels through the motor. It keeps everything locked into position. We'll remove the index pin and set that aside. And we'll shake the motor and see if we can get the whole thing to come out. All right. With a little bit of difficulty, we managed to get the motor out of the tool. This is basically the entire motor assembly removed from the tool. So in the other motors, we had a single valve, and that single valve blew in through a single port in the back of the motor. In this case, we have two ports in the back of the motor. Each valve passes air to a different port. So in this case, when I move my lever in the forward direction, when I push down on this side, it activates this valve. Air comes in through this passage. When I push down, the air can travel up through here and out through this port. When it does that, it travels in through the back of the motor, through this port. We can see that this is indexed in here, so when it goes together, it goes together in that position. The air travels out through that port, through the gasket, into this side of the motor. Once again, it travels through the motor, pushing on blades or fins and causing the motor to rotate. The difference between this motor and the other motors is it has two ports. When the air goes in from this side, the air flows through the motor in a different direction, pushes the fins in the opposite direction, and travels through the motor. Once again, we have our exit, our exhaust for the air. In this case, the air travels through the tool and simply comes out through the side of the body, which is underneath the lever. I'll put this back together and we'll take apart the large impact gun where you can get a better view of the internal working parts. Now that we have our butterfly gun back together and hooked up to the air, I can show you guys when you push on the forward side, it turns clockwise. When you push on the reverse side, it turns counterclockwise. All right, so when we have a socket installed on this type of tool, if you hold it, it hammers. Now we are going to get into this Campbell Husfield impact gun and I'm going to give a more detailed explanation and a deeper disassembly.